Hi, my name is Jackie Murray, and I'm your guide through these 32 lessons of the Structured Learning Technology Curriculum. We're in fourth grade right now, lesson eight. This is on coding. This is one of the lessons in the curriculum that you can move wherever you want. You don't have to teach it as number eight. You might move it earlier or later in the year. Maybe you want it to fit perfectly with Hour of Code in December, then that, that's fine. Just move it there, or maybe you don't do Hour of Code in December. Maybe you wait till May at the end of the school year. That's fine, too. This one isn't scaffold, uh, scaffolded from other lessons. It's just learning coding. So there's vocabulary, um, and coding does have its definite set of vocabulary. So all of these, if you're teaching coding, you're probably going to introduce these. So we are just going to get into them. That's just the way it is. It's good time because these are not only appropriate for coding, but they help students a lot as far as problem solving, math. So they will mean a lot to the students as they get older. Um, new skills, coding and programming, macros, hotkeys, I don't know. It depends upon what you did last year with coding. So coding in general, they've been doing since kindergarten. If you did, if you've been following the kindergarten curriculum and kindergarten first, second, third, or if you're doing that right now, then that would be a new skill possibly for students. Okay, if you, this, this lesson is presented as though it was going along with the hour of code. So if you're going to do that, you want to make sure you can keep your students for about an hour and 15 minutes. So you have plenty of time, the hour for the coding and then 15 minutes to introduce things, get them into it and wrap it up at the end. So check with anyone involved in that chain to make sure that works for them, any of the stakeholders, the, your classroom team. If you're going to do the macro, then make sure that the macro you're going to select for creating the short key works, and we'll get into that later. You are going to skip things like presentations and evidence board if you're doing this as part of Hour of Code because you just don't have time. So they'll, they'll be fine. They'll catch up on it next week. Okay, in general terms for you, there are reasons why you want students to learn coding. So here are some of them. Look them over and then apply them to your circumstances. And it's one of those skills like critical thinking, higher order thinking that you, they help students help themselves. So they prepare them for college and career when they won't have a teacher there to answer all their questions, when they are going to be the teacher. So the coding is one of those types of things. Show students these two pictures. And ask them when they hear the word coding, what do they think? It's also in their workbook. So you can just have them look in their workbook if you're using workbooks. Otherwise, put this on your smart screen. And which is it? This looks like what most people, even teachers, think of as coding. Complicated gobbledygook. But this really is what it is. You start here. You lay out every step until you're finished. A, a code, a program, does exactly what you tell it to. So you have to have those footsteps put in place, and then it works perfectly. So just talk, talk with students about that. This will help simplify it in their minds. They won't feel like they have to do all this other weird stuff. OK, there's five approaches in this lesson that you can take. So you pick the one that works for your students. Remind them that they have done all this coding in the past. Yours might differ from this, but you've definitely had the students into coding before. If not, you'd probably want to start with one of these, which would be down miscellaneous websites or one of the free Hour of Code programs, like code.org. So that would be a good place to start if this is your first year coding. Okay. Um, Language-specific symbols, these come with um, alt, control, uh, short keys. And you put, in, put a short key, use a short key, and it, it will give you some of those accents and those um, word, those letters that you see in other languages. So here's lists from Macs and Chromebooks of those types of what the keys would be to have them. These are good for students to be aware of, maybe try out, and especially pick some that are very specifically important to your group. Alt codes are very fun. So there are lots of places to do alt codes. You can pick some, go to, go find an alt code list. And let's see if I put one here for students. No, I didn't. Oh, I did. Okay, here's alt codes for Windows, alt codes for Macs. 
So go to those and have the students pick a few that they like and try them out. For instance, here's some that they might like for a heart or a music symbol if they're musicians. Copyright probably won't resonate too much with them. How about this one for Spanish? So have them try some of these alt codes just as what they're doing for our code. Then programming short keys is really good to do where they have an action that they do a lot of and um, they, they have a a program that they use a lot but that program doesn't have a short key like control X whatever it is well that would be good how about control let me I'm trying to find one control slash something it doesn't have a short key that activates it immediately so the student wants to have one they're very easy to make now they do have to go into the properties for this for the program so you have to know that students are responsible enough that they won't mess that up. Um, so this video shows how to do it, but you know, I'm going to run it through. This is just very simple. My favorite is for the snipping tool. So this one, so that when I do, when I do control alt X, my snipping tool comes up right here. I'm all ready to take a screenshot and then I can save it, copy it, send it to someone, whatever I want to do. It's all ready to go. But if I had to go in, and I'll say no, if I had to go in here and go to start button and where snipping tool, oh, God, oh, there it is, okay. And then do it that way, I would use it less. I like short keys, and you'll have students who like that. So you go in and right click and go to properties. And then down here on the shortcut key, I put control alt x in. You'll put whatever your short key is for that. That works better. It's right under, here's all your tabs at the top, it's under shortcut. And if that wasn't there, it would just be blank. So let me see if I can find one that's blank. How about paint? Does paint have a short key? There we go. See that it says none. So if you use paint a lot, maybe you do control all P. Uh, a warning though, before you use a short key, let me try control alt P. It does nothing. You want to make sure you're not overwriting another short key. It's all in the video. So this is a really good activity for students to use and have one that they maybe they use Word all the time, so they want to go there. So that's a good one for um, coding because it's very useful and it's one they can take home and use anywhere. So then these are the two you will use. You can use them regardless of your experience with coding, but they're also great if you're just starting out on coding. So these are some really good websites. Um, a lot of sites have Hour of Code offerings like code.org. You can go to my blog, askatechteacher.com, and look under coding, and you'll find even more websites than this. So this is a review just to remind you of all the reasons why coding applies well to your Common Core math standards. So as you're doing coding, and if you have to fill out what standards it applies for, this is it. Actually, all, all of these in the standards of, for mathematical practice. Tend to precision, use appropriate tools strategically. It, it's just great for all of those. A summary of how to take the screenshot here. So let's see if I've missed anything in the students part. This is a screenshot of how to make the short key. Now, I did this in Jing. I didn't do it in Snipping Tool because Snipping Tool isn't powerful enough to allow all these boxes and arrows and everything. I think that's it. Oh, here's some iPad coding apps. I'm not sure we had that in the teacher manual. That's why it's always good to go in both of them and see what, what there is. OK, guys, I think we're done. All right. Have a great week. Let me know if I can help you with anything. I look forward to talking to you in a week. Bye.